APGD Attorneys at Law. It's been a minute since I've recorded one of these. This is a five minute with Eric. And what I wanna talk about is why we need to do due diligence when we're buying or selling businesses. So let me take a step back. So our law firm started off 10 years ago. We were a solo and we were swimming in the space. There's many, many solo law firms in Miami and in America. And we were, of course, trying to be competitive. And what you find is, you know, at that entry level point, we were getting a lot of entry level clients, a lot of entry level businesses. Um, now, as we've grown and we've now at a, a 25 attorney spot, we're kind of in this in-between range where we're bigger than a solo practice and have more resources, but then we're not to a big law level. And so it's the same for our clients. A lot of our clients are about there too, somewhere in the five to $20 million revenue range. So obviously most business owners are dreaming about a, a nice payoff, a nice exit. And what they're, what's gonna happen is at some point they're gonna wanna think about selling their business and they're going to go and maybe start talking to people like me, people talking to business brokers, talking to their accountant about what they need to do. And there's a couple problems that come up consistently. So the first is a lot of times these people don't necessarily have a formal business background, meaning maybe they were great at running a restaurant or they were great at running a plumbing company or great at running a roofing company. And by the way, those are all three great businesses that if they're run well, can provide a lot of money for the family and the owners and, and livelihoods for the people. I'm, you know, I'm not knocking them at all. And so they've grown it and now let's talk about the plumbing company. They've grown the plumbing company. Maybe they've got a bunch of different trucks They've got uniforms, they've got policies and procedures, they've got loyal customers, they've got a good brand recognition that they've built up, and maybe they've, they've recorded their trademarks and they've gotten their revenue up to, let's just make up the number, $10 million a year. And I think we could all agree that that would be considered a successful small business in America. And so now the owners are thinking about selling and they don't know where to begin because they were good at being plumbers and then they were good at running and growing a plumbing business but they don't know anything about that next level, that next world. So a lot of times, and if we do this right, and this is really important, you start cleaning up your books and records and make your company saleable, maybe even two to three years before you're ready to sell. So let's just say we're, we're, we're talking about our five-year plan. It might take a couple years. I'll use a couple easy examples. Most Small business owners are gonna take some liberties with the company credit card and maybe with some company expenses. And maybe they have an aggressive CPA who's gonna help them do that. And maybe they've gotten away with it and they've never crossed the line where they've gotten investigated by the IRS. But what have they been doing? They've been reducing the taxable profit in order to pay less money in taxes, but now turn it around, I wanna sell my business. Guess what? You want to make it look like it's profitable. You want the opposite to the eyes of a buyer. The buyer doesn't want to come in and say, oh, this business barely makes any profit because in reality, it might actually be much more profitable if you just cleaned it up, maybe changed some of your business practices, maybe got a little bit more strict about what you're using the company credit card for or, or how you're compensating the owners, etc. So there's an entire process and some of the better business brokers we've worked with, they will actually have this direct conversation. Your company is not ready to be sold yet. However, here's some things we can do. A uh, common example that's recommended is bringing in a fractional CFO, right? Like maybe your company is not big enough to have a full-time CFO, but there are many companies that offer the services. It's adjacent to accounting where the fractional CFO can come in maybe a couple days a month and say, hey, these are the things we need to clean up. These are how we wanna make our financial statements look. This is how we wanna improve the EBITDA so that we can make it a more saleable business. Right? And then where the lawyers can come in is we can do pre-sale due diligence on your own company. So for example, when a buyer comes along and the buyer says, hey, we wanna see a list of all your vendor contracts, you aren't scratching your head like, oh, I don't have anything organized. No, you're like, oh, no problem. My lawyer already organized that. Here's all of our employment agreements. Here's all of our vendor agreements. Here's our, our lease with our landlords. Here's all of the equipment financing. It's all organized, it's all cleaned up so that you look professional and now you're swimming in a different pond and you're playing a different game and you might even be working with very sophisticated people in, the, in equity and finance where they're coming in and they're buying maybe companies like yours and you wanna be presentable to them and able to talk their language. 
So if you're ever thinking about selling your business or you're thinking about growing your business but wondering what the exit looks like, leave a comment below. I'm happy to reach out to you and share my experience. Been doing this for about 15 years. And if there's any introductions I can make, I'm happy to make it to any of the different professionals you heard me talk about so far today. Thanks everyone.